Are you struggling with feeling stuck in your life journey? Does it seem as if the challenges or conflicts that you keep experiencing are on repeat? Healing through feeling could be your new way through to a more satisfying life. Now, here is the host of the Feel to Heal with Sharon Nichols show, licensed marriage and family therapist and life guide, Sharon Nichols. Welcome, everyone, to the third installment of my series on love. And thank you so much for checking in and listening to the Field to Heal show with myself, Sharon Nichols, on the Incredible Inspired Choices Network. I, I sat in a long meditation for myself today. I as I've mentioned before, this topic, each week the topic works with me in such an incredible way. And I'm forever asking the universe to give me what it is that I need. So I sat in a really long meditation. And the biggest thing that I got from that today is I have over 25 years experience of being a therapist. I obviously have way more experience being in relationships, way more experience, you know, even with, with friends. And the biggest thing, the main reason why I chose to do a series on love is because it is everywhere. It is everything. It is what we all want. It is even at the basis of our core wound, because somewhere along the way, we didn't get it the way we think we should have based on some crazy thought or notion that we had when we were too young to process that thought. So after the first two um, shows on, oh my gosh, (laughs) <laughs> I, I, I've been so in my head. So I, I apologize, even though I was told I probably shouldn't be doing that anymore either. I don't need to apologize. I'm not apologizing for myself. I'm just apologizing that that I'm, that I too am human, that I too have a lot figured out and that with each and every moment, I am still just in it and you know in it to win it and i love working with couples i love the idea and the notion of of separating the two having a conversation with with one and really getting down to the nitty gritty of what it is that they really truly want and need getting past the assumptions and the judgments, and then giving them the language and the tools with which to communicate that to the other. And if you, after today's show, which I will mention again at the end, if you or your partner are feeling as though you are stuck in the power struggle stage, which is, which I will spend a lot of time talking about in a little bit, in a bit, It would be so awesome if you reached out. You can find me, you can email me at Sharon Nichols at feeltoheal.com and check out um, my website. And obviously you've been with me on this journey so far, at least I'm hoping that you are, at least if you've just found me, thank you so much for tuning in. There's still so much more to go and we are at the halfway point of the love series. And actually we're also at the halfway point of my my first year commitment to doing a podcast. And I started off doing the podcast wanting to write a book and figuring that each show would be its own chapter. And what I realize is that probably the title of my book, and of course everything can change, will be my year of doing a podcast. It's like, this has been such an incredible journey of learning and of sharing and of receiving and of giving and all the things that I am about as a human, all the things that I want to share 
and inspire and get out of my own way through inspiring others if I can get out of my own way. My that is what I'm hoping would be the inspiration. So today we're going to start with a meditation. So if you're just tuning in, thank you again. And I start usually every show with a meditation. However, I usually jump in and I am changing things up and I am doing things different because that is the only way to keep any relationship. Um, what's the word? Any relationship current. I'm um, knowing that there's, it's always going to change and that there's always going to be the opportunity to do something different. And thank you, because that is a little shot I needed for myself. So let's all receive a breath. In through the nose. And hold. And out through the mouth. Hmm. Finding a comfortable position for yourself. and allowing your eyes to close. Receiving a breath in through your nose. Hold. Exhale. Out through the mouth and hold. Inhale through your nose. And this time, breathe in light. Holding. Exhale through your mouth and breathing out love. Inhale the light. Hold. Exhale love. Inhale the light. Breathe in the light that is surrounding you. Exhaling the love that is within you. So you are creating this incredible, beautiful container of light and love. Hmm. We are all one. We are all connected. We are all the light. We are all the love. Just as you are listening to my voice, others that you don't even know are listening as well. Connecting, connection through light and love. Receiving a breath, normal in. Exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Now visualizing someone or something that you love, a deep love, not just a casual one, such as the connection between parent and child, child and parent, or a love of a spouse or partner. It is so much easier to do this exercise if you use a close family member. While visualizing them, allow yourself to feel your love for them. If it helps, remember a favorite memory that you have with them or of them. Example is your wedding day, the first time you met, that moment when you just knew. That look 
that your loved one gives you when they just know. And if you are having a hard time remembering, that light that you feel within you when remembering the moments that is love. Focus on it, hold it. Breathing in that light, holding that love, exhaling the love to the container. So feel it and gently allow it to embrace you and you embrace it. Holding on to that love within your heart while you maintaining the regular breathing. Letting go of all of the thoughts that may be holding you back from allowing this incredible love container that you have created for yourself and those around you. Remember, love is you. You are love. Love is everywhere. As you focus on that feeling of love to the best that you can, allow the silence of everything else around you. And know that at any time, focusing on your breath, breathing in the light and the love, exhaling the light and or the love, knowing that you have created this incredible light, love, light and love, love and light, whatever order your mind needs to hear it, this incredible container for yourself, And any time, with any breath, with every breath, with every moment, you can find yourself in this container. Receiving a breath. <sighs> Exhaling. And when you are ready, allowing your eyes to open. And just being in the noticing of how light you feel and the love that you're feeling. <sighs> if we could take each and every moment coming out of this meditation, what an incredible place to be making decisions from. Just in love and in light, in love and in light. Thank you so much for listening. When we come back from break, we're going to dive deep into holding on to love, keeping love, whatever that means and whatever that looks like for you. So thank you so much to, for listening to the Feel to Heal show with myself, Sharon Nichols on the Inspired Choices Network. And we'll be back in a moment. 
At different times on our life journey, we can feel stuck and struggle with seeing our way through. What if the answer to the struggle is just to go deeper than the surface? By tuning in to Feel to Heal with Sharon Nichols Show, with licensed marriage and family therapist and life guide, Sharon Nichols, you'll receive insight and guidance on exploring your feelings in order to heal yourself. Are you ready to create a more satisfying, peaceful, and successful life? Listen for the Feel to Heal with Sharon Nichols Show every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Mountain, and 3 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspire Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Feel to Heal with Sharon Nichols Show with licensed marriage and family therapist and life guide, Sharon Nichols. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also ask questions or comments by email by sending to Sharon Nichols at feeltoyield.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, and thank you so much. You're listening to the Feel to Heal show with myself, Sharon Nichols, on the Inspired Choices Network. And I am just so grateful. I am so full of love and light, and thank you so much for listening to and participating in the meditation just before the break. And I want to talk a bit about why I chose this topic in terms of the whole love series. And I know sometimes I can feel, I feel as though I may be a broken record. Although I chose this topic because as women, we were taught that our life begins once we get married. Like we are, we are told, you know, all the rom-coms, all of the fairy tales that we were told or given, or even the fables that are, as soon as you find love, then your life begins. Because we're actually not ever really taught how to keep it. And what does it actually even really mean? And that's just the, that's just the ladies, then the men. The men, as you know, and even if we just base it back on human animal, that we are just, we're animals, we are, we are here to procreate. So men are told that they are supposed to spread their seed. They are supposed to impregnate as, as many women as possible, because that's how we, that's the whole point of procreation. So they're told when they get married, that that's where actually when their life ends because they no longer can have access to the harem that they were told they should have. So here we are now. For a woman, her life begins when she gets married. For a man, his life ends when he gets married. And neither one of us then are even given a roadmap or any clue or idea of what we're supposed to do with all of that. So, you know, one of my favorite movies is Ever After um, with um, Drew Barrymore, Angelica Houston, and Drew Gray Scott. And in the end, the last line is, is, you know, he, you know, she's, he says to her, we're in, we, you know, we're supposed to live happily ever after. And she says, what does that even mean? And he says, well, I don't know. And 
I thought that no truer words have ever been spoken in any movie, any movie, because we all know the story of Cinderella. It is wonderful how she gets picked and chosen for being less than or not. And he sees all the wonderful things in her and, and wants to elevate her and he loves her. And isn't it just wonderful? Except it's the happily ever after. What the fuck does that actually even mean? So, I've been working with couples for the full 25 years that I have been doing this and obviously been in my relationships myself, learned, loved, grown, lost, heartache, happiness, bliss, um, had incredible experiences, all some good, some not good. I'm assuming, please correct me if I'm wrong, that you too have experienced a lot of what I just said. All some good, some bad, some happy, some sad, you know, the whole gamut, because we are the sum of all of our experiences. And we usually try and do our best to not repeat the bad. And the bad is in quotes, except really? How many of us keep doing the same thing over and over again? As you've heard me said multiple times, sometimes I feel insane because I keep saying it over and over again. So for the past 25 years, I have been working with couples and I have been talking about the stages of relationships. And I have found Bruce Music, M-U-Z-I-K. And his website is love at first fight.com because he has a belief that there's five stages of of relationships the first one is the romance stage the second one is the power struggle then the third one is stability and then the fourth one is is the commitment stage, sorry, and then co-creation. I apologize. I I was thinking, I'm thinking ahead. So I apologize for the for the the silence. So let's talk about the romance stage. The romance stage, our body, our brains, our bodies, as I've mentioned before, we're bathed in oxytocin. Everything is just wonderful. We put our best foot forward. We only show the best part of ourselves. And if there is ever a red flag, oh, we just turn it around. Oh no, that's, that's just them protecting us. When in actuality, maybe that's them trying to control us. So it's truly going to be about discerning the truth for yourself. So once all of that wonderful, beautiful, incredible drug that we've got going on wears off, then we are left with the actual person, who we actually really are and who they are. So we're also, we're experiencing it from them and they're also experiencing it from, experiencing it from us. So it's, so it's about noticing where you are and not so much projecting. And then it's about noticing where they are and not allowing them to project. So it's, it's so interwoven and there's so many different nuances. And I love the romance stage. It is so much fun. It's the best part when you're getting to know one another, when you're, when you're being shy and you're, and you're being bold and you're trying new things and you're allowing and, and because all of this oxytocin makes you feel as though you have absolutely nothing to lose. And why do you, why would you? So Bruce Music says, and I love this question, why would nature do this to us? Why would nature have us fall in love 
with someone who feels so compatible and then turns out to be incompatible. Why, why do we do this? Because opposites attract. And again, going back to my whole thing on the procreation, we are going to attract someone who we think will complete us. You know, you complete me was great. I mean, it is so based on, on creation and co-creation and procreating because we want to create the best possible human. And this is all unconscious, by the way. I'm not, this is not coming from a narcissistic narcissistic standpoint. It's not egoic. It's just what we do as humans. We want to continue to increase the species and make us better. I mean, isn't that what this is all about? Is to be the best version of yourself that you can possibly be. And so therefore you're going to attract someone who will elevate you to be the best person because they compliment you and you compliment them. It's equal, it's equal. So it's about creating equality, not from a standpoint of less than and more than. It's just, what can we create together? What are your strengths? One of my strengths. It's not about focusing on the weaknesses. We spend so much time focusing on the weaknesses. Please, people, I beg of you, focus on the strengths. <sighs> which leads me into the second stage, which is the power struggle, which is where the highest percentage, percentage of relationships and marriages and in breakup or divorce, usually around the three to four mark, 40 year mark, because you're constantly butting heads. This is when we still have that expectation of romantic love, that it is just going to be with us, that, that it is still the happily ever after. We're supposed to live in that moment forever, except we know that that's just not practical. So this is when feelings of disappointment and even anger on the fact that you can't keep going back to that place or that your partner is not supplying you with that. You're not able to supply it for yourself. You're not able to supply it for your partner. It's like all these expectations. So instead of seeing only the, the similarities as you do in the romance stage, you just start focusing on all the things that you no longer have in common. And then it's also about moving from that box, from the girlfriend box, to the fiance box, to the wife box, and what that all means. Now I was having a conversation with someone who has been married a, a couple of times and noticing her partner, who has been married a couple of, who'd been married also three times. They were both on their third marriage together. And the noticing of him and how he changed from the girlfriend fiance to once she was in the wife box. And then what then that caused him to do differently. It's incredible what we create in our own fucking heads in our own minds. <sighs> anyway, as you can tell, I'm a little passionate about this. I, I, I think I've been holding back. Not I think, I know I've been holding back. So when we come back from break, <laughs> I'm going to tone it down a little bit. And we're going to talk more about this power struggle stage and what you can do. And then the rest, because if you can get past the power struggle stage, whew, what, what you can do, just think, whoosh. See you back in a minute. Thank you for listening to myself, Sharon Nichols on the Feel to Heal show on the Inspired Choices Network. And we're talking about love. See you back in a minute. At different times on our life journey, we can feel stuck and struggle with seeing our way through. 
What if the answer to the struggle is just to go deeper than the surface? By tuning in to Feel to Heal with Sharon Nichols Show with licensed marriage and family therapist and life guide, Sharon Nichols, you'll receive insight and guidance on exploring your feelings in order to heal yourself. Are you ready to create a more satisfying, peaceful, and successful life? Listen for the Feel to Heal with Sharon Nichols Show every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Mountain, and 3 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Feel to Heal with Sharon Nichols Show with licensed marriage and family therapist and life guide, Sharon Nichols. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also ask questions or comments by email by sending to Sharon Nichols at feeltoheal.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back and thank you. You're listening to the Feel to Heal show with myself, Sharon Nichols, and today's topic is relationships and keeping them, being in them, embracing them, loving, being in one, loving yourself, being in one, because it's always going to come back to you. So just before break, we were, I was talking about the power struggle stage. This is so big because most couples find themselves in it and they either stay in it. And I've worked with couples who've been in the power struggle stage for 20 plus years, even more. And, or they figure out a way to end the power struggle and therefore then leave the relationship. So some of it has to do with fortitude and some of it has to do with, I'm not giving up. I will not fail. And most couples enter into couples therapy because of the power struggle stage. And I can usually tell who is entering into therapy with me to, because they really want to improve their communication. They really want to move through this power struggle stage that they didn't know that's what it's called. Um, they want to move through the, 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 the constant um, sadness, disappointment, or even anger. So I know who wants to move through it and come out the other side. And then I also know who's, who is in it to help me help to have me help them end the relationship. So it's usually, you know, I can spot it a mile away. And sometimes I still try and figure out if there is still saving, how far along they are um, on either side as to where they are within the relationship. And that's why what I do is I separate out. I give each couple an hour and a half as opposed to the traditional hour for the same amount of money because we need, you need more time. Um, I, I was just asked a question of where, where, if there was ever a time where I chose not to work with a couple. Um, I have chosen to not work with a couple after determining whether they, you know, where they were in, in it, whether they were just using me or, um, where, you know, if they were just using me, then I would give them some tools. Although, you know, it's, there's only actually only one couple that I, that I sort of fired everyone else. No, I, I believe at, at the core that everyone just wants to figure themselves out in order to be able to have the, re and receive, and then also give without the expectations of love. 
I mean, it is truly all about love. That's why, that's why there's so much around Valentine's Day. So much crap came up for everyone around me about Valentine's Day. If you just started dating somebody, what do you do? If you're not dating somebody, what do you do? If you want to be dating somebody, what do you do? You know what? It, it's it, where are you in the 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 love relationship cycle for yourself, for those around you? You know, would it be too forward if you did send somebody a Valentine? What does that even mean? You know, we have all these expectations. And that is the biggest problem with the power struggle stage is that everyone has expectations and it's okay to have them. I'm not telling you not to have them. Please have them. Although figure out what they are, do the best to communicate and then allow the other to either meet them or not. Because it's not about you. We still make assumptions and we still judge and we project beyond measure onto our partners. It's exhausting, isn't it? I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. So the power struggle is going to last depending on a couple of things. One, your willingness to embrace change. Willingness, not ability, willingness. If you are so stuck in your ways, not gonna happen. Your history as a child, your relationship history. And if you haven't done any work, or if you're still coming with the projection and the expectation of your partner giving you all that you need so you can live happily ever after, also, you're going to be stuck in the power struggle stage. And then the other thing is how much advice you receive and the help and the support and the words of wisdom Where are you in the allowing and always, 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 always consider the source. Always consider the source. Me included. I'm still human. I still don't always get things right for myself. And I'm okay with that. Although if I'm sitting across from you, I'm... It's about you. It's not about me. Not about me. Always about you. And so what I do do is I will ask questions. I will pull out from you where you really are and whether it belongs to you or not. Like, are you running the same old shit that your parents ran, that their parents ran? Because that's what we do. I know I've talked about this before. It's about stopping, changing, doing something different within your relationship so your outcome will be different. Even if your outcome is just to have more love, more acceptance, because there are plenty, plenty of people who are in really good, tight, solid strong, supportive, loving, and not always in every moment, perfect relationships. Relationships, I think, I know I've talked about this. Relationships need to go like this, not like this, which is what most of us are in. And we know what this is. As And I'm making the rolling waves, then the staccatic waves, and then the flat line. We, no one wants a flat line and the, st- the, st- the up and down, the choppy, oy, that is so painful. And how many sleepless nights have you had from that? You don't even need to answer. I already know. 
So the only way to deal with the power struggle stage is to break up or to survive. And overcoming the power struggle stage, the third option is obviously always that, is to get over it and to move through it. So according to music, you graduate from the power struggle stage when you discover a reliable way to communicate kindly about emotionally charged topics. You can quickly repair the emotional disconnection between you. You can heal old hurt and restore broken trust. You can learn to share power and not power versus force, not it's never force. When I use the word power, it's about equality. It's not about, I need you to do this. It's not a struggle. It's not, I'm forcing you. It's you are showing up for yourself first, giving without any expectation. Here's the biggest one, being, giving up the fantasy of the happily ever after. Because that's what it is, it's just a fantasy. I mean, I can gladly, would gladly give you a roadmap to the happily ever after. And just basically what that looks like is it's going to be a bumpy road. And that's okay. Bumpy, okay. Flat line, not okay. We don't want a straight path in terms of a flat one. We want some hills because as you go up a little bit of a hill, you get a different view. And then you want to come down into a valley and just sort of be there and just hold in a little holding pattern. That's okay. But as long as you keep moving forward, it's also like the spiral that keeps moving up. You know, you turn around, you know, sometimes you are facing backwards in the spiral, but that's okay too. So I have found that in working with the couples that I have worked with over the years, three of the biggest issues that have come up are one, being so caught up in how things are supposed to look because of the judgment and fear of being judged. And so therefore looking to create something that looks on the outside as though it is supposedly so beautiful and wonderful. And yet here's the thing, no one really believes it because no one knows what goes on behind closed doors. And everyone truly believes that it's impossible for somebody to have exactly all that they are trying to portray. And then the other is being honest with yourself and not trying to lie to your partner. And I'm not talking about actual lie, lie lies. Those are one thing. It's just you putting your best foot forward, you meaning even if it's ugly and gross, still showing that side of yourself being vulnerable. The lie is trying not to be vulnerable. And then the other one is healing your core wound from your childhood. What did mom or dad or sibling or first relationship do for, do for you to you that is preventing you from having the incredible relationship that you want and moving you out of the power or struggle with yourself first and then your partner. So when we come back from break, we're going to talk more about love and relationships and keeping them. I know I've talked, excuse me, I've spoken so much about the power struggle. So now we're going to talk about what to do once you've moved through it and once you get to where you want to go. Yay. 
See you back in a couple of moments. And thank you for listening to the Feel to Heal show with myself, Sharon, Sharon Nichols on Inspired Choices Network. We'll be right back. At different times on our life journey, we can feel stuck and struggle with seeing our way through. What if the answer to the struggle is just to go deeper than the surface? By tuning in to Feel to Heal with Sharon Nichols Show with licensed marriage and family therapist and life guide, Sharon Nichols, you'll receive insight and guidance on exploring your feelings in order to heal yourself. Are you ready to create a more satisfying, peaceful, and successful life? Listen for the Feel to Heal with Sharon Nichols Show every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Mountain, and 3 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Feel to Heal with Sharon Nichols Show with licensed marriage and family therapist and life guide, Sharon Nichols. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also ask questions or comments by email by sending to Sharon Nichols at feeltoyield.com. Now back to the program. Welcome back and thank you for listening to the Feel to Heal show with myself, Sharon Nichols. And just before break, we were talking about the power struggle stage of relationships. And so I'm going to come back to this because we will spend more time talking about what to do after the power struggle stage if the relationship ends next week, because next week's show is about losing love. And so we're going to be talking about the power struggle stage probably for quite some time, because I think we all get stuck in it, or even I know I got stuck in it with myself. I mean, it's the struggle within ourselves. So once you've learned how to resolve your conflicts, your fights, your issues, um, whatever it is that is taking you away from going back to or being a part of that incredible, wonderful romance oxytocin stage, that's where you can enter into a time of stability. Stability is a period of peace. Because if you've actually resolved your differences and gotten on the same page together, there could be that thrill of love that get, that's returned. And isn't that just great? Although it's a more mature romance stage because you both have gotten that you've suc- that you have succeeded and that you are never going to change your partner and that you're okay with your partner being different than you and that you're finally seeing how they complement you not focusing only on how they're different from you but you're also focusing on how you are also still alike and you're embracing the complimenting that you do for each other. It's also really important to now set the clear boundaries here because you don't want to keep falling back and sliding back into the commitment, the, uh, the power struggle. It's about really, truly just knowing the truth of who you are and then the truth of who they are. So the commitment stage, it has nothing to do with getting married. (laughs) Although we think that that's what means, oh, you made a commitment, you're now gonna get married. No, the commitment stage is that you fully surrender to the reality that you and your partner are human and that your relationship has shortcomings because of it. Although at this point you've learned to love each other by having to like each other and that you choose each other consciously on a moment to moment 
day, hour to hour, to hour day to day, month to month, year to year. You are continuing to choose because we always have choice, always. That is also one of our God-given rights as humans. We always can choose. So now you have this opportunity since you've committed to experience the balance that love can bring of belonging, of fun, of the power of knowing that someone's got your back. So you can lean into that. And then of course, freedom. So the big pitfall in this stage is thinking that all of your work is now done. It's not. <laughs> well, on some level it's true, of course, because you've gotten over the big power struggle hurdle. Although you still need to keep working on yourself and then working on your coupledom. And it is about still choosing. I still choose you knowing everything about you. So I still choose me knowing everything about me. Because it's always going to come back to love and yourself. That was the first one in the series. So I'm going to come back to the fifth stage in a moment. I wanted to just, actually, I'm going to mention the fifth stage, which is co-creation and bliss. So it's a reminder to tend to your relationship. So I just want to mention that the things that, that healthy, committed, blissful relationships have is they make a point to connect with each other. So they put their phones away when they are when it's date night. They keep their expectations in check. They know when it's okay not to feel love in the moment. However, just know that it is always there. They keep going back to why they chose each other. They have new adventures together in and out of the bedroom. They also have their own lives. So spending a time alone for the good of the relationship, they keep it light and plainful. They laugh a lot, a lot. That's one of the things that I like most about my relationship is how much we giggle. And the biggest thing is that they find little ways to keep the relationship moving forward, not taking the relationship for granted ever. So each day doing something to show your love and respect so you can receive the love and respect. I'm just going to receive a breath on that. Because it is truly about you figuring out for yourself what is keeping you in the power struggle stage. It's not projecting it onto your, onto your spouse or your partner. It's about looking at what triggers you when someone says something, which really has to do with you because no one can make you feel any other way. No one can make you feel. It's your choice. And so it's about reaching out to me, Sharon Nichols at Feel to Heal and getting some guidance as to pulling away all those layers so you can get down to what your core wound is or what your biggest trigger is and then how then best to communicate that. Thank you so much for tuning into today's show. I am Sharon Nichols. This is Feel to Heal on the Inspired Choices Network. And next week, we are going to continue to talk about love and losing love. And it's okay because it is just always an incredible experience because that's what love is at the end of the day. It's love. 
Thank you for choosing to listen to the Feel to Heal with Sharon Nichols show. Sharon Nichols will return next Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Mountain, and 3 p.m. Pacific on InspireChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, give up the struggle, feel all you need to feel, and make this week your best one yet.